Lord in this place. We give you glory, we give you honor. God, you're worthy. You're worthy of the glory. With our hands, we give you glory. With our mouth, we open up and say hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I'm rejoicing because I'm healed. By his strength, I'm healed.
word this morning is from 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 5 through 7 and it read as I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in you through your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. I read for you this morning, 2 Timothy, Chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father God, we come today, first of all, to just say thank you for allowing your mercy and your grace to allow us to come to the house of praise once again. Thank you most of all, God, for just being God all by yourself. Thank you for guiding and leading us in the direction that you would have us to go and allow self to be completely removed. Allow your will to become our will. Then, Lord, as we go into this service today, we pray first of all that you would continue to guide our pastor in the direction that you would have him to go and let us as members and as those that are watching via Zoom or uh, uh, FaceTime or whatever, the facts of the matter is that you are God. We pray now that you guide him. Continue to keep us in your care of keeping. And then allow us to just to he not only hear your word, but become even more doers of your word. We're going to thank you in advance. For it is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Mountain Church. It is good for us to be here this morning. Throughout this month of May, where we are using our spiritual gifts for God. We are certainly glad that so many of you all have joined in, have tuned in via the virtual experience, even online. We see you there speaking. We see you, Sister Zena Fleming. We see you, Sister Joyce Lynn. We see you, Sister Valerie Fuller. Tell your mother, Sister Marilyn Ford, that if she gets there early, I will announce her out too. That's why I haven't been calling her name. I'm calling out the first three who start speaking at the Mountain Church who say good morning. So we want you all to keep that fellowship going in the chat. Keep on speaking to one another. Keep encouraging one another. Keep praying for one another. Because that's what we do at the Mountain Church. And while you're doing that and praying for one another, I'm going to ask that you keep a few of our membership who have asked for our prayers. Would you keep them lifted up in prayer? Well, I'm asking you to keep lifted up Brother Terry Bruner, his mother. I'm asking you to keep lifted up the brother of Brother Barry Cole. I'm asking you to lift, keep lifted up Sister Christian, Tom, Christian Thomas. I'm asking you to keep lifted up Sister Brother Clifford Rugley, that is the father of Sister Lavinia. I'm asking you to keep lifted up Brother Howard Johnson Sr. Keep on praying for him. We saw him this past week, and we still want to ask that you keep lift him lifted up in prayer. I'm asking that you keep lifted up Brother Brian Bindi. And then also I'm asking that you keep lifted up the family of our departed sister Vanessa Johnson. Would you keep that family lifted up? That services was here at Mount Sinai and you don't get over the, a person like her in a week's time. So I'm going to ask you to keep lifted up that family as we start to continue to grieve as a mountain church family. And also, as you are doing that, please look, put on your calendar as a reminder that next Sunday we will be having our Graduate Recognition Sunday. So all of our 2021 graduates, please, please, if you have not done so, please get in your information. Make sure the church office has it. Get a confirmation email because next Sunday will happen. And we don't want to hear anyone call.
call and say, why wouldn't my son, my daughter, my niece, my nephew, my auntie, my uncle, why didn't y'all recognize them Mount Sinai? We're going to say, because we gave y'all chance after chance after chance after chance, and including this day to get in all your information. So we want to celebrate all of their achievements here at the Mountain Church. Mount Sinai, oh, and that's a special reminder, June 20th is coming. June 20th is a day where we're going to celebrate two things. We're going to be celebrating fathers. That's right, Pastor E. We're going to celebrate fathers here at the Mountain Church, but we also celebrate our pastor's preaching anniversary. So, ladies, yeah, yeah, he's been preaching a long time. So we want to go all out. So, ladies, start putting money aside right now for those big Father's Day gifts. They got Rolex watches, Cartier glasses. Gucci store, you can start putting that stuff aside right now to make sure June 20th, so the countdown has begun. Mount Sinai, it's worship time. We're going to enjoy yourself. You are welcome, welcome, welcome.
I know you think you're getting it good at home, but you just wait until you can get back in the sanctuary and be with us in fellowship. Brothers and sisters, receive our pastor, Dr. Samuel Jackson Gilbert II. Lord, I thank you that my mind is alert, that my lips are anointed. Open my mouth that I may preach the mysteries of your gospel. Forgive me of every sin, cleanse me of every unrighteousness. Lord, I ask that you would hide me now behind the deepest, darkest, and most obscure portion of your cross. These your people will hear absolutely none of me, but hear absolutely all of thee. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We certainly thank God for our worship and praise team today for lifting us, lifting us in worship. Second Timothy is where I want to pinch a tent today. First chapter, verses five through seven. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the land on of my hand. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yes. As we align ourselves with God's realignment, we say if we be the church, God will grow the church. And in order to be the church, this month our emphasis is on spiritual gifts. And I'd like to tag this text today, stir up the gift. No company that one would go to ever just want to hire people for the sole purpose of just giving them benefits. Now once someone is hired and began to work, they do however receive some benefits. They are provided with health insurance and dental insurance, vision insurance, holiday pay, vacation and several other benefits and each week uh, every two weeks they receive a salary that enables them to pay their mortgage purchase a car gas it up maintain it insure it because of the wages they receive they can feed and clothe their children but ultimately they are really hired to do a job they are hired to work. And for those of us who are children of God, there are many benefits. We're provided with salvation and eternal life. We are adopted into the family of God. We have a relationship with the Father. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We have a home in heaven. And we have an opportunity for an abundant life while we are on earth. Oh, yeah. Those are just a few of the benefits. But God didn't just save us right. to keep us 
uh, from hell and he didn't just save us to enjoy all of the benefits but he saved us in order that we may use our gifts for the glory of God the truth is God God does not save us to sit soak and sigh just as there's no such thing as a non-functioning member of your human body, so there ought to be no such thing as a non-functioning member of the body of Christ. In fact, an inactive member is an oxymoron. Because if God has saved you from your sin, he has called you to work for him in some way according with your gifts and your abilities. The story is told of a farmer who had a team of horses in which one horse consistently worked harder than any of the other horses. And the farmer says, he says, they are all willing horses. The ones willing to pull and the rest are willing to let them. Sadly, that's often accurate in the church. In fact, pastors often refer to what we call the 80-20 rule, where 80% of the work is done by only 20% of the people. But God never intended it to be that way. He intended that all whom he saved should use their gifts in some capacity. And there are many reasons why people don't use the gift that God has given them to serve the Lord. Some don't use their gift because their commitment to the Lord and the church is half-hearted. They attend church occasionally. They turn on Facebook occasionally. They get on Zoom occasionally, but their real interest is in the things of the world. And some don't use their gift because it'll be an inconvenience to them. Often they are found uh, quitting because serving the Lord is just too inconvenient. They quit because some church member may criticize them or even hurt their feelings. Others ran out trying to do too much. Some are looking for commendations from people, and when their name is not called or recognized, guess what? They quit. But for one reason or another, many believers grow weary of using their gifts for the Lord and retreat to a more comfortable seat on the sideline. And it seems that that was the case with young Timothy in our text. Timothy tended to retreat from the front line of serving Christ. He was rather shy and timid and had a few health challenges. His youthfulness caused him to be a little insecure and unsure of himself when difficult issues and times required confident leadership. Once Paul uh, was heard saying to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 16 and 10, he said, now if Timothy comes to you, see that he is with you without cause to be afraid. Paul knew that the rowdy Christian, the rowdy Corinthians might run roughshod over this insecure young man. Serving the Lord especially in leadership church it's not for the faint of heart. Church folk can be rough. Church folk can be mean spirited. Paul sat chained in a Roman dungeon awaiting execution. He knew that he had to hand off the torch to Timothy. So he wrote this final letter to encourage Timothy to keep running the race in spite of difficulties and opposition. His words should encourage any of us who may be tempted to draw back from actively using our gifts for the Lord to persevere 
and hang on in there. Paul, through young Timothy, gives us at least three reasons from this text why we should continue to use our gifts in spite of difficulties and opposition. First, he says that you should use your gift for the Lord because you've been saved to serve. You've been saved to serve. Look at verse 5. He says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith. Tell me that I know, I know you've been saved because you are saved. You must serve Christ. Paul is reminding Timothy because I, I know that you have a sincere faith in Jesus Christ. You must stir up the gift, kindle afresh, keep in full flame your spiritual gift by actively using it in serving the Lord. Church, let me drop this off while I'm passing by. Salvation is the foundation of any genuine service that we can offer the Lord. Yes, sir. Salvation. 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 I mean, it's a huge mistake, church, to think that you can offer God anything before you have first received the gift of salvation. I, 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 for example, people fall into this error by thinking that if they give financially to a church or Christian organization that they're doing something that will commend them to God on judgment day. Some think that they get a pass just because they are employed by the church. And just because you're employed by the church don't make you saved. But God will not be indebted to no one. He will not let you into heaven as a payment for anything that you do for him. Salvation church is a free gift. In other words, you must first, hallelujah, be saved. If you can do anything to earn it or deserve it, then it's no longer a gift of God's grace. But a wage or reward that's due. God intends for us to be saved. <laughs> There's nothing you can do for the Lord unless you save first. <laughs> I don't care what it is. I don't care how long you've been in church. It means nothing if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Good works follow salvation, but you cannot in any way earn it. So before you get involved in any way to serve the Lord, make sure you are born again. I say make sure you're born again. Maybe, maybe you think I already know this. Timothy knew it too, but Paul reminded him of it again in verse 6. He says, for this reason, therefore, because you are saved, I remind you. To stir up the gift. Because you are what? Saved. I remind you to stir up your gift. Somebody here this morning, God has gifted you for service. For some reason, you've let the flame burn out or grow dim or, or lack of service. Let me remind you, God saved you to rekindle, to set it, set it. Set it ablaze. Stir up the gift. He gave you. He gave you uh, an opportunity to work for him when he saved you. Uh, there are two ways in which God gifts every saved person. Every born again person are gifted in two ways. The Bible says God's main gift to save folk is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I wish I had a friend. Every Christian, every Christian, every believer received the Holy Spirit to indwell in him or her at the moment of salvation. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to serve him. You can't
can't serve him without the help of the Holy Ghost. And then secondly, the Holy Spirit imparts spiritual gifts to every believer. If you're saved, you get the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives you what? Gifts. Every Christian, every child of God has a spiritual gift. If you're a believer, you've been gifted with a spiritual gift, and one day you will have to give an account about how you used that gift that you have been given by the Lord. Now, if you're thinking, but I lack gifts to serve the Lord, remember, God never calls you to a ministry where he don't give you the gifts to fulfill that which he is asking you to do. Amen. Moses said, Lord, I stutter and can barely talk. God said, who made you talk? Who made you? Yeah. Jeremiah said, I'm just a boy. I'm too young. God said, I knew you yes, sir. before you were born in your mother's womb. Amos was a keeper of sycamore trees in the country. But God gave him power to preach to the king's court. Every believer, every believer has a spiritual gift that God wants to use. The reason you should use it for God's glory is because he saved you. You're saved to serve. But not only that, uh, Paul teaches us through young Timothy that you must be empowered to serve. Paul tells Timothy, let me remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 6, Paul said, I laid my hands. I empowered you. I ordained you. Because of the faith I saw in you. And the spirit that God has put in you is not one of fear, but of power. The word in the Greek here translated stir up is one that means to give life again to a fire. To rekindle a flame that has grown dormant. It's a figure of speech for Reviving or stirring up something that has been neglected or has grown weak. What Paul was telling Timothy to do was to stir it up. Rekindle the flame, Mother, gracious gift of ministry that God has given you. Looking at Paul, Timothy had grown up a little fearful of what that ministry might cost him because yeah. he watched Paul look at Paul, oh man like uh, was in prison yeah. <laughs> that scares a young preacher he's <laughs> a mentor he, he's, in, he's in prison and he's looking at Nero's chopping block can you imagine him saying mm -mm, no not for me <laughs> You know, that's a little intimidating. You watching your mentor going through these trials and tribulations. And Timothy began to get a little slow and relaxed in his gift. And his zeal began to grow cold. Paul said, hold up, Timothy. Don't let your eyes fool. He's encouraging him to, to, to don't let what you see happening to me yeah. Yeah. cause you to get slow in using your gifts. Yeah. I wish I had a prayer. Right? Yeah. Someone here today need to be reminded that God has gifted and empowered you to serve. Yeah. Don't be a used to be. Don't be a used to be. Paul tell Timothy, listen, I'm I'm on my course that God has set for me. I'm using my gifts. Even in my suffering and pain, I'm still doing what God has called me to do. Don't let what you 
see cause you to be a used to be. Cause you to stop doing what God has intended you to do. Don't let things and opposition that you see happening cause you to not use your gifts. Oh, Father Lord. Uh, as I was studying this passage, I wondered what happened to us that causes our passion for ministry to weaken. Each of us has a place of ministry in the body of Christ, whether it's behind the scene work, like caring for the church building or resources or preparing food for our fellowship times or developing one-on-one -on -one relationships for discipleship and evangelism or upfront kind of ministry, such as teaching a class or serving the needs of children are giving leadership in worship. But whatever it may be, why is it that at times our zeal for ministry needs to be stirred up, up rekindled? Well, you know, one reason I think of uh, this particularly relevant is because opposition to the work of the faith can sometimes be strong. Opposition to what you're trying to do can sometimes you know how the Lord can be leading you to work but that work ain't easy. You know how the Lord is leading you to serve but serving him ain't easy. You would think just because the Lord told you to do something that it ought to be easy, peasy. But, but it's not always easy. God, God has a way that will set you on a track to, to give him glory through your service that, that is filled with opposition. Y'all not going to pray with me. Don't, don't, don't think, don't think, don't think, don't you think, don't you dare think that, that just because God called you to serve that the serving is not going to be rough sometimes. Huh? Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm encouraged though, church, when I see people who've come through our ranks and have served the Lord in the midst of grave opposition in their own lives. When I think about folk in our church who have gone on to be with the Lord, but they kept on serving. Kept on serving. Right. When I think of folk like Gwen Ferguson, yeah. Yeah. even in her sickest time, she kept, kept serving the Lord. When I think about Ernestine Mason and Arthur Mason and George Smith and yeah. Alvin White and many others who never quit. They never stopped serving the Lord, even until that last breath. It motivates me, hallelujah, to stir up my gift. Motivates me to keep on serving. When I think about the opposition my dad had in just building this church. Ah, uh, how can I quit? When I see how he kept on serving. And the Lord allowed us to have over two acres in the heart of one of the richest communities in our city today, the Heights community. How did oh, it encourages me to want to keep on, to keep on serving. Have we got a witness? And guess what? I learned from these soldiers that if you keep on serving, God will take care of you. It don't matter what the opposition may be. God will take care of you. Be not just me. Whatever the time. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love. God will take care of you. Through days of toil when heart doth fail. God will take care of you. When days of fierce your path assail. I wish I had two or three people in the house today that I could that will testify that he'll take care of you. Won't he do it? If you're serving in the midst 
Hallelujah. Finally, Paul exhorts young Timothy to stir up his gift and continue to use his gift for the Lord, not only because he's been saved to serve and empowered to serve, but he said you must, you must have the right motivation to serve. The right motivation. One of many reasons why people stop serving the Lord is because they were serving with the wrong motivation. Huh? A lack, a lack of love for other people can cause you to lose your sense of zeal in ministry. I say a lack of love for other people. You see, in the work of the body of Christ, our ministry is for others. I mean, it's not for you. No, don't ever get so big-headed that you think this ministry is about you. This ministry is bigger than you. It's about others. It has nothing to do with your feelings, nothing to do with your emotions. It's bigger than you. The gift that God has put in you has to do with about a ministry that he's giving you for others. And if we allow our love for people to become weakened through such things as bitterness and unforgiveness, and jealousy, then our zeal for ministry to those people will be weakened. Text says, but God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of what? Love. Of love. <laughs> yeah, I was. I had a few people that know that the problem is that sometimes uh, a lack of love for people love. will cause you to quit. You've got to love others. Can I give you another one? Uh, uh, there also uh, is an issue that causes us to not serve like we should, and that is a love for secret sin in our life. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm digging deep now. Sometimes, sometimes we got some secret sins that we're holding on to. Habits, attitudes that the Lord is telling us to get rid of and rob us of our zeal in his service. Ah, uh, it's good to have the regular habit of praying as King David prayed. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. That's, that's the prayer that every child of God ought to be praying. Because this love that Paul is referring to is not a love that we conjure up from one another, but a love that the Lord himself gives us for each other. Yes. It is, as we discussed some time ago, it is the new commandment. That he gave us when he said, a new commandment I give you. That you love one another. Uh, uh, not as the world loves you, but as I have loved you. And by this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the reason Paul gave, 
get gain from while we are each to use our own gift of ministry toward one another when he wrote through love serve one another that's another reason for being zealous about the ministry God has given us his love because God has given us his love I express my gratitude by serving and loving loving others well I gotta go now let me let me close this feeble message like this Karl Barth arguably was the one of the greatest theologians of the 20th century. His 12 volume church dogmatics alone consist of over 10,000 pages of systematic theology. And so toward the end of his life, uh, Bach made a tour of the United States where he had the opportunity to speak at several of our nation's top universities and during a question and answer time following one of his lectures a student posed what seemed an impossible question to answer student raised a question said Dr. Morris You've written extensively on every aspect of theology and church history. All right. And I'm wondering if you can sum it all up in a short sentence or two. The room fell silent. Right. Dr. Barth just stood there for a moment, yeah. carefully considering how to respond. Yeah. Some of the professors and students who were there clearly began to feel awkward that such a trifling question would be asked to such a brilliant scholar. Finally, Dr. Carl Barth turned toward the student and succinctly replied, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if for no other reason, you should stir up your gift. Serve the Lord in the cause of Jesus. Because Jesus loves you. Yeah. Do you hear me? How can you bury your gifts? How can you sit on your gifts? How can you be selfish with your gifts? How can you not use, use your gifts? When you think about the fact that Jesus, Jesus loves you. Have I got a witness? I don't know why, why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life for me. But I know one thing in the morning. I know I'm glad he did. How I got a witness. He left his life's only glory to bring to us redemption story. Then he died. Have I got a witness? I'm going to use my gifts to give him glory. Hallelujah. Because he loved me, I'm going to tell the story. Can I tell the story? I got to tell. I got to tell the story. Can I have a few minutes of your time to just tell?
to accept him who wants to be a part of your life. He stands at the door and knocks, and we ask that you would let him in. And if you will, we ask that you would call the church and let us know of your decision. Our phone number is 713-869-9171. We'll be glad to pray with you. We'll be glad to call you back and let you know we appreciate the decision that you've made. Again, that's 713-869-9171. You can also write it in the comments and let us know. You want to make the greatest decision anyone could ever make by accepting Christ. We also want to let you know that if you're ready to come back to the church, when the opportunity presents itself, simply let us know. And a part of coming back is giving what God has blessed you with. And as the songstress just said, withhold nothing. Everything we have, we have because God gave it to us. So we encourage you to tithe, to be a blessing to the body of Christ. We encourage you to give the first tenth of what God has blessed you with, and you can do so by mailing it into the church at 902 West A Street, Houston, Texas, 77007. You can also go on our website, msbchouston.org, and give through our website. You can be a blessing by giving your tithe, your love offering, your Sunday school money, even your benevolence to be a blessing to someone else. And please, sir, please, ma'am, don't withhold your blessing from the man of God who gave his heart and gave the gifts that God has placed within him so that we could all be blessed. You can use his cash app at dollar sign D-R-S-A-M and the number two. That's dollar sign Dr. Sam 2 to be a blessing to our pastor. Once again, we thank you for being a part of this ministry. Do your part, withhold nothing, and give to the Lord. Let me say thank you, Mountain Church, for tuning in today. As I always like to share with you, I love you, and I'm so proud to be your pastor. Look forward to you tuning in next week. We ask you that each of you will be a part of our worship experience. Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we ask that you get on Zoom for our Bible study. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Now, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest on the